It is Monday, January 18th, 2021, and you are tuned into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Today on the show, we dive into what went down on Chili Bowl Saturday. We recap the World of Outlaws Late Models Weekend and get you up to speed on last night's Wild West shootout finale. So let's jump in. The 35th annual Chili Bowl Nationals is now officially in the books, and late on Saturday night, it was Kyle Larson standing on the stage getting his second golden driller and second in a row. He held off charges from both Justin Grant and Christopher Bell and survived a few late mistakes to earn the victory through the week larson didn't appear to have the best car or be the strongest competitor entering saturday night's finale i'm not even convinced he was the best on saturday night but he did enough to keep the field at bay i think it shows just how good larson is that even when he's off he can still find ways to win i think that's why we saw christopher bell go for his wild flip towards the end of the event he was going to need to close the gap on larson and throw a big move to find a way by he just made a slight miscalculation on the curb in turn three it's something we don't often see from Bell, but it was a graphic representation of Bell's desperation there at the end. For the rest of the top five, it was a strong week for Grant, finishing second after earlier winning his prelim night on Friday. Tanner Thorson did a hell of a job to recover from a flip in his heat race on the prelim night. He went from the C main to fourth on Friday, then 11th to third in the feature Saturday. Cannon McIntosh stayed impressive, grabbing his second straight main event top five. And Darren Pittman uh, went hard charger, gaining 15 positions to go from fifth in a B main to top five in the main event. Hell of a job there for Darren Pittman. The two big things people were talking talking about on Saturday was the alphabet run from Jason McDougal and the lengthy delay for track prep following the night's B mains. For McDougal, his prelim night issues led to a Saturday I main appearance, but he and his team were ready to roll early in the day and start moving through the racing uh, races. Flow Racing's Tyler Burnett asked Terry Klatt early in the day if they had enough fuel to keep McDougal going all day, and he responded that they didn't come to the Chili Bowl to start a savings account. I loved that response. Uh, McDougal went fourth to the win in the I main, 10th to second in the H, 12th to second in the G, 17th to second in the F, and 15th to second in the E. The further in the day he advanced, the more the support in the building and on social media grew. Things came to a head in the first D main of the afternoon. McDougal started 17th and methodically picked his way through the field, getting into the fifth and final transfer spot very late in the race. In the final corner with the transfer in hand, contact from Ryan Bernal sent McDougal around, ending the alphabet run. McDougal, uh, McDougal finished finished 12th while Bernal was handed a penalty for the incident, leaving him 16th. It was a shame not only because it ended McDougal's run, but it also negated the strong runs both drivers had in the D-Main. I believe Bernal started 16th in that D-Main. Bernal was booed inside the building uh, and took some serious heat from watchers on social media, but he did apologize personally to McDougal and the Clat team. In an interview on Flow, Bernal called his move stupid and said he just drove in too hard. At the end of the day, to me, it just looked like a racing deal, and Bernal, he's not really known to be that type of a driver. Um, you know, he knew, just as everybody in the building did, that you know that kind of run that McDougal was on. So sometimes guys get racing hard, and when transfer spots are on the lines, you know, guys are just going to take chances in those situations, and Bernal just took it a little bit too far. Uh, as for all the track prep complaints, I see both sides in the argument. Gravel and the guys who are in charge of the track are trying to do everything possible to provide a good service for the 55 lap feature, you know, and the fans in the uh, at home and in the building want to proceed, you know, want action to proceed in a timely fashion. You know, I think it's a difficult situation, especially, you know, all week long you watch, you know, the programs, they move so efficiently, you know, cars are on, you know, on and off the track with really incredible precision. The track prep kind of gets snuck in at various points through the night. You know, but then on Saturday, once kind of things start with the C main, it, it seems like the program kind of grinds to a halt, um, you know, with all of the track prep and things that go on. And, you know, I, I don't think that this problem can be, you know, completely wiped out. I don't think it can be eliminated completely. I do think there are a few moves that can be made to at least speed things up, you know, like finding a way to do driver intros while track work is going on. You know, it was nearly 1 a.m. on the East Coast when the race concluded, and we have to find a way to be better than that, especially on a night where a lot of first timers were tuning in, you know, with all of the free things that were out there available between, you know, Map TV Plus, the Map TV Facebook page. You know, a lot of people were tuned into that event. All in all, though, it was another fantastic week of Chili Bowl racing. It was great that even during these times, we were able to have an indoor event that provided really fun racing all week. The entire week's worth of results and stats are available in the analytics section at dirttracker.com. And I have two conversations episodes upcoming as well with a Chili Bowl focus, so stay tuned for those. We didn't make the top 100 with the Chili Bowl pool pick sheet, but I believe we finished somewhere in the 200s, which I think is pretty respectable for the first time using the rankings generated from dirttracker.com. As for the prediction formula, we were 5 for 5 with prelim night picks, but missed out on the week-long winner with Bell crashing and Larson taking the win. 
We talked back on Friday about the World of Outlaws late model series opener, and they were supposed to be in action Friday night and Saturday night, but they lost the Friday portion of the weekend to rain. They did race Saturday night, and the evening belonged to Kyle Strickler. After finishing third back on Thursday night, Strickler went quick time, won his heat race, sat on the pole, and led all 40 laps en route to his first ever World of Outlaws late model series win. He held off Scott Bloomquist at the end for the win, with Bloomquist ending up second, Daryl Lanigan third, Ricky Weiss fourth, and Jimmy Owens recovered from a rough Thursday to finish fifth. Strickler now has wins with both national late model tours, and I think the rookie battle between he and Ricky Thornton Jr. with Lucas looks like it can be really, really fun this season, you know, with all of the things Thornton had done this week out at Arizona. Through two nights, Ricky Weiss again leads the series in feature plus minus as he did in 2020, going 23rd to 7th on night one and 15th to 4th on night two. It's great that he can pass a lot of cars, but he'll have to find a way to start closer to the front this season if he's going to take the fight to be ship for the championship. Leaving this first weekend at Volusia, Strickler and Kyle Bronson top the point standings. The Outlaws are off now for a few weeks before they return to Volusia on February 10th for Dirt Car Nationals. The Wild West shootout wrapped up yesterday after they raced six times in nine nights out at Arizona Speedway. Early in the week, Jonathan Davenport grabbed two wins and Ricky Thornton got one him, uh, himself. Friday night and Saturday night, Tyler Erb asserted himself between Davenport and RTJ, grabbing wins over both drivers each night. For last night's 50-lap feature, Brian Shirley and Davenport uh, started together on the front row with $25,000 going to the winner. It didn't take Davenport long to grab the early lead with RT, uh, RTJ quickly moving into second behind him. It was like deja vu all over again. Near halfway, Thornton made a run at Davenport for the lead but wasn't able to clear the 49 and Superman maintained the top spot. From there, Davenport was never really challenged again. Tyler Erb made a late push to track him down but in the end couldn't get it done. Davenport grabbed his third win of the week, taking home the $25,000 and adding an additional $10,000 dollar bonus for having three wins on the week. Herb was second, Thornton third, Brian Shirley fourth, and Bobby Pierce was fifth. All eyes in the late model world now shift to Alltech Raceway in Florida. The Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series kicks off their 2021 campaign on Thursday night with practice before the racing starts in earnest on Friday. A good amount of competitors who are at Arizona and Volusia will be at Alltech this weekend um, and the additional races beyond that. So we'll, we'll talk more about the Lucas opener later on in the week. There are just two items on the streaming schedule today besides Flow Racing 24-7. Dirt Vision has round number nine of the iRacing World of Outlaws Sprint Car World Championship from the virtual Williams Grove Speedway. You can watch that for free at 9 p.m. Eastern. To see the full daily schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope everybody has a good Monday. You can find Dirt Tracker Daily on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or where you get podcasts. Please subscribe and leave a review. You can also watch the show every day on YouTube and Facebook, and those likes and subscribes on YouTube are appreciated as well. You can email the show at info at dirttracker.com. I do check those every single day, and you can follow Dirt Tracker on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Dirt Tracker. That's D-I-R-T-R-A, uh, excuse me, D-I-R-T-R-A-C-K-R. Uh, you think I remember how to spell it. Uh, you can check out the website for all kinds of cool dirt racing stuff by visiting dirttracker.com. And you can follow me personally on Twitter at Justin underscore Fiedler. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.